Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Data Dave, and I am a Twitch partner that streams on my channel and also Adorama's Twitch channel as well. And today, I would like to talk to you a little bit about Elgato's Stream Deck. So we know that the Stream Deck can be used for streaming, but today I want to introduce you to five different ways that you can use Elgato's Stream Deck outside of streaming. So let's get started, shall we? So for my first use for the Stream Deck, it's actually one of my favorite ones, and it is the multi-action option that you can customize the Stream Deck. Now for what I use it for, actually I use it for MMOs and PC games. So when you play MMOs, like for me personally, I play Final Fantasy XIV and I play a lot of Lost Ark. What I use it for is to help me with combos. So when you're playing MMOs, you need to hit like, we'll say the A key, then in two more seconds you need to hit the C key, or whatever key combination you use for your combos. On the stream deck, I can actually customize it to where I can say, hey, hit this key first, add a delay and add a few seconds, hit this key after, add a delay, hit this one and this one at the same time. So being able to customize these multi-actions, these hot keys in there is really amazing. You can customize it however you want for your games to save you trouble from typing your keyboard or pressing certain keys or having the right timing. Having an option that says, hey, I can tailor this towards how I play this game, it could be my combo, and with one button press, I can avoid pressing like five to ten different keys and keep my rotations for these games. So for me, it'd be MMOs, but for you, it could be MMOs, it could be other video games, whatever you need on PC at a simple button press, and you can customize it however you want. Like, what if you have to hit three keys at once? That option is there. What if you need to hit one key and then seven seconds later to hit another one? You can do that. So it's customizable, extremely useful, and a great first use for the Stream Deck outside of streaming. So for my second use for the use of Stream Deck outside of streaming, it will be for using the hotkeys for audio editing, video editing, or any editing software you use, such as Photoshop and more. So for me personally, I voice act professionally. And a lot of times I have to increase the volume of lines, decrease the volume, or even silence them completely. So I have hotkeys in place mapped to my keyboard that I can use for this. But ever since I've gotten the Stream Deck, I've actually mapped those hotkeys on the Stream Deck because the buttons are right there. So all I have to do is just drag a certain, we'll say highlight on the line, press a button on the Stream Deck, and it makes life easier. You can customize this to what your hotkeys are and have them all in one place instead of, you, instead of you memorizing what key does specifically what. So I highly recommend that because your workflow becomes much easier, you can get a lot done a lot faster, and it's just really simple to use once you just map to what you already have. So I highly recommend that for those that create their own content offline and those who do voice acting like me or even Photoshop, there's plenty of things you can use it for and plenty of hotkeys to make the job a lot quicker. So another use that you can use a Stream Deck for is my third recommendation is controlling both your audio and video within these online meetings. A lot of us are working from home or now in Zoom calls, Microsoft Team, etc. even within classes. So what you can do is that you can map it so that you can turn your audio on and off, your camera on and off, or even leaving the meetings at a simple tap of the button so that you can focus more on what's going on instead of like, hey, let me figure out where I can turn this on and off, or, you know, a lot of times when things are being shared on screen, it switches where those buttons are. You can have it at a simple, easy tap on your stream deck, which makes it really useful. Just don't accidentally hit it on and off or press the buttons randomly when you're not supposed to. I've done that in a meeting, but it is a nice and practical use, just making it a little bit easier as a lot of us go through all of these meetings online. So for a fourth and practical use that you can use for the Stream Deck actually is shortcuts. Now a lot of us put shortcuts on our desktop and if you're like me, your desktop probably has a bunch of folders, files, different video games you downloaded and it can get kind of congested. So what I've done which is pretty cool is that there's actually an open command that you can use for different programs, video games, etc. So if I want to play Lost Ark, I just simply go on my Stream Deck, press the folder with games, click on Lost Ark and it will open it up for me. If I want to play something else, I just click it simply from there. So instead of me searching all over for certain games or opening up Steam and looking through my library for certain games or even sorting through my desktop icons to find out, okay, where is this game? I could just map it on my Steam Deck to my most commonly played and say, hey, at a press of a button, open up this program for me. And it doesn't necessarily only have to be video games. What if you want to open up Photoshop or Google Chrome at a simple key press? You can, or button press for that matter. You can press it on the Steam Deck. 
So for my fifth and final recommendation of a use for a stream deck, and this one's gonna easily be the most broadest recommendation, but at the same time, it could probably be the most useful. It would be to check out the plugins available for Stream Deck. Now, the reason why I say this is I've seen plugins for Spotify where you can tailor to it, switching music, playing certain songs, etc. I've seen them for Visual Studio Code, which surprised me because as a coder myself, I'm like, wow, there's actually a plugin for this. I've seen it for Philips Hue Lights, like the ones behind me right now that you can use and control. So the list goes on and on, and I highly recommend you just give the list a look because you will be surprised at the practical apps like Zoom and other things that you can use. The one that surprised me the most though is apparently you can use a flight tracker for it. So the thing is, there's plenty of uses for a Gato Stream Deck outside of just using it for your live streams. So give it a look. I hope that these help you all out. And yet again, like, comment, and subscribe here at Adorama XP's channel. I'm Data Dave, and if you want to see more videos, more information videos about gaming news, about GPUs, etc., definitely check out the channel and the videos. Speaking of GPUs, words, speaking of GPUs, Josh Soleil has actually done a video as to which GPU is best for you, so you'll either see a link in this video or just go check it out on the channel and give it a watch. With that being said, this is Data Dave here. Thanks for listening in, and I'll catch you all later. Have a good one, everybody.